All right, guys, I'm going to install the fort guards here. These are UFO fort guards. Couldn't find the red ones from a Cherbys or Polysport, poly so got these UFO ones. So let's get them mounted up. This is the brake side, as you can see. It's got the little thing for the brake here. Expand it a little bit to get it on. And then we got a couple bolts to get in here. And then that inside one's a little bit tough to get to. It's going to be one of those ones that's going to require some hand work. You know what, this inside one's going to be easier with the tire off. Since it's not tight yet, I can still take that off. So let me do that real quick. That definitely did the trick for the inner one here. Got on a lot easier without having to squeeze past that tire. So let me do the other one side. All right, there we go. Got the fork guards on, looking good, liking the red. So next I'm gonna get the front fender on, and then the front number plate. All right guys, I'm gonna install the chain here. This is a primary drive, extra chain, gold. See how much needs to be cut. So I'm gonna kinda let it go out and feed it. All right, so we got the chain on. It's good, I just had to get some help. I had to compress the swing arm and the shock to get it under the chain roller up front, but got it. So I'm gonna grease up the master link here. Got some grease here they provide. So I'm gonna put a little bit onto the shaft here. Stuff's kinda nasty, as you can see. And we got two O-rings here. And just squish it past all that and just spread it around. So these chains will collect a bunch of dust the first ride, but they last really long because of the grease that's packed inside of them. So now I'm going to shove a bunch more grease on there and slide it in from the back here. It's easy to do this on the sprocket because it keeps the two halves where you want them. Some more grease. The other two O-rings go on. And our top plate, which we're gonna need to press on here. So then I got that. Should've put that on first. But I can slide this forwards. Okay, so this tool I got here is exactly for this job. I already got it installed here. Let me just get it snug down. It's for installing these master links here so you just tighten it up and it presses the two halves together just enough to get the our clip in here that's good and then you just spin one side fully off here loosen up the other side and like so all right, so when installing the master link clip here, you're gonna wanna have it going to where the back end here is going, the rotation <clears throat> of the tire when it's going, so it's gonna be spinning like this, roosting out. So you're gonna want this to be facing this way too, so if it gets hit by like a rock or something, then it won't pop off. So just take a pair of needle nose pliers, like so. You gotta get them on it, these aren't the best and pop it in like so so now if a rock were to hit it say here it would not pop it off all right guys let's get this axle nut on here got both of the adjusters set right you got the big torque wrench out here for that 93 foot pounds inch and a quarter here now i need to flip this around so i can push down on it and get it finished. There it is. All right, so I'm gonna install the pipe here. This is an FMF Turbine Core 2. Got this from Rocky Mountain. The reason I got it is because it's spark arrested. 
you guys can't see that down in there but there's spark resting in there so put some new high temp rtv into our little coupler here so let's see if i can get it to slide on you gotta get that coupler over the front half of the pipe and get the whole pipe in almost there a little bit of a stretch here but got them in shouldn't have to take this off till I need to take the subframe off to do carburetor work or something but shouldn't have to do that because we got the electron all right guys let's get this rear fender installed here part of the restyle kit so I'm just gonna try and slide it in right here get it in between the subframe it's a tight fit and I don't have the OEM bolts for right here in the little spacers or the little clips that go right here and provide threads all right guys let's throw on this front fender here had to do a little bit of modification to the spacers they were a little bit too long for this front fender and we had to modify the washers give them a flat spot and the back ones need two flat spots just to fit properly, but we got it. All right guys, let's put this front number plate on here. Part of the restyle kit, just like all the plastics we got here. So I just gotta wiggle it into its spot and it needs to kind of get in front of these two little clips here. All right, just like that, there's our front number plate. All right, now we can get our tank on. It's only held in by one bolt here. Just slide it in, and then that singular bolt, which is up here. And let me find a washer for that. And we got this little tank holder here. Got it new from Honda here. Let's see if I can get it on. So it goes on down to the frame here and all the way up to the tank, fuel tank, just like that. So now we need to get the fuel line on. So I'm gonna cut it to a good length here. And I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. And should go on just like that. Brake line on, I already got this um, master cylinder got the old fluid out rinsed a little bit of it out and rebuilt this lever here cleaned it up a little bit polished it up so we got these lines here from tusk braided with that red looks super good so we figured out that this line the way it's sitting is going to go on here so put the bolt in and put our other washer in and go ahead and thread it down so yeah that's basically it i'll go do the caliper the same way and i'll show you guys how to bleed them on the bike all right guys so i already bled the front brake so i'm going to show you guys how to bleed the rear brake here so i got an oil sucker over here this is for sucking oil out of motors specifically boats and so I got the master cylinder full close to the top and I got a vacuum sucked in the oil sucker. Now I've seen people using things like syringes to do this. All you just need is something to pull a vacuum and something, some sort of a hose. So what I'm doing here is I got an eight millimeter wrench and while watching 
the master cylinder I'm gonna let that vacuum pull all of the air out of here you can see there's quite a bit of air and then just make sure to watch the master cylinder because if it starts sucking air then that just defeats the purpose of this whole process so you're gonna keep topping that off I'm just getting the main out of it right now there's a lot of air in there let me top it off another thing that you can do which I did in the front is while like oh op so open the leader valve back here and have someone else to pump the brake wide open right as you open it and that'll kind of help lead the whole system so I'm going to do that now and get this brake break bled side panel on here so this is a two piece setup two pieces just kind of snap together so we just got to get the bolt aligned through here and thread it on right here and you also got to get some other pieces aligned here got to get this back kind of corner in it won't really go until you get the seat in that'll finish aligning that Okay, so to get this front shroud in, there's a couple tabs you gotta align here. So you can see we gotta align this tab and this tab into that rear half that we just installed, like so. So it looks nice and smooth. And get this front bolt going, like so. And we put our spacer in right here. I'm going to get this bolt just like so. Squeeze that plastic down. And once all this is set, it should pretty much look like one fluid piece of plastic all the way from this front tip here all the way to the end of the rear fender with a couple little seams in it. The way I've been getting these little spacers in is put the bolt in and then put it with it. And then get it get everything through the hole and squeeze it all down and then to get this last one here we're gonna have to do a little bit of flexing so i get some help doing that and then i'll do the other side and we're getting real close to starting this thing just need to get that seat finished up and while i'm at it right here i'm going to throw on the little um air vent for the fuel tank let's do that I don't know what this little thing would be called. It's just, I guess, a fuel tank um, air vent. It goes right up here from Tusk. So I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. All right, guys, I'm installing some hand guards right now. And now for the actual hand guard itself. I'm gonna slip it on. See, there's a couple grooves here, and you only have to put it in one, so depending on where you have it, you can change it. I'm putting them so that the end of it is pretty much parallel with the end of the handlebar. So it deflects most things. They're not the strongest, not compared to a full wrap. And then you put this little piece in, it's a little spacer that goes in and takes up this place of the other one so you don't crush the plastic. And then all we have is a bolt that slides in and a nut that goes on and get these two pretty tight. I did lose, lose um, one of these bolts, run these, um, these hand guards on my 250F and one of these bolts did come out at one point so it's being held on by a zip tie right now it's doing fine though all right guys so when installing the kickstand here I got this trail tech kickstand here this one just happens to mount right to where your foot put foot peg 
is like the whole foot peg mount. So pretty easy, you just put these two bolts in. Get the other one started here. And crank on these just a little bit. Don't want these coming out, as always. Like so. Now we can put our foot peg back in here. So goes on pretty simply. It goes in here, pin comes down from the top. Might need a little bit of hammering. I'll get back to that in a minute, finish that. But we also have to put this little spacer here for the spring which goes with this bolt, which goes right here for the subframe. Now I just need to get this little rubber piece off and we can get the spring on. All right, to get the spring on here, got some vice grips. So I'm gonna get it started in here, like so. And if we pull the Kickstarter kick stand up, get it closer. And then if we're lucky, It'll go on when we release. Just need to give it a little tap. Didn't, couldn't find my needle nose vice grips, but there you go. That's how you install the kickstand. Super simple, super easy, and very useful. So you can see it goes up super high, gets out of the way. Just need to tighten down this bolt and get the rest of the foot peg back together. All right guys, let's install this skid plate from Works Connection. So this thing is pretty cool here. As you can see, it's made out of good aluminum here, super light, and it's got this foam to prevent any like mud from getting super built up under it. So we got some hangers here. So these guys here, you can see they work with these bolts so they go in the front so they kind of just hang onto the frame like so and just have the bigger piece towards the inside and then these two ones in the rear are a little bit different one side you can't fit in fully so it's just more like this so this side's gonna go right here you just have to find where it goes somewhere in there and then the other side can hang so i'm going to start off by hanging the forward ones so i'm going to have this foam in the skid plate it's kind of tricky Alright, that's basically it. Just need to get it tightened down here. Kind of hard for you guys to see that, but it's in there. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I know I missed a bunch of things with this build. Filming wasn't the best, but got it done at least. So, hope you guys enjoyed. First start is next, and then graphics after that, and then first ride. Catch you in the next one. Take care.